But so yeah, not not really doing so much of the uh, the news stuff unless it's stuff that's like pops out and is like like super interesting that we like actively care about. Making it shorter too. Figure that'd just be easier, keep it funner, so that way we're not like halfway through and we're like fucking like zoning out and shit. <laughs> Cause man, when we were when we were doing it like in the fucking summer, it would get like hot as shit and like I'm sweating. I'm like, oh god, I still have like another hour and a half of this and I can't turn on my fan because then they'll get on the mic and I'm just like, fuck, this sucks. Anyone need a uh, bathroom break or water or anything? Oh, I'm going to make sure to wait until we're in the middle of recording. Don't worry. Oh, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. See, th this is why I love you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a phone call in the middle, but I'm not going to mute my mic. Hey, we're back. It's uh, it's season two of the Game Session podcast. Uh, cue all the... Action Essentials 2, special effects, like all the explosions, all the blood splatters, uh, maybe like the Wilhelm scream or something, you know, just like all, all the cool stuff that you don't have to edit whatsoever. <laughs> that should be fun. Uh, yeah, I know. I'm excited. It's season two. We're back. There's, there's some changes. Uh, I'll, I'll talk about those in a second. Uh, but today with me, I've got uh, Kyle, otherwise known as Kyle. How you doing, bud? <laughs> it is true. I am. I am also known as as Kyle. I'm doing 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 good. Glad that uh, you're in a place to bring this back and excited to to help me be a part of it. It's gonna be fun. You you have a very special role in the in our entire cast. I think we have how many people do we have in our thing? I don't. I actually don't know off the top of my head. Like what six, seven, eight people? Twelve. 14, Twelve. Eighty-seven. Too. Um, but yeah, you, you have a very unique role in all this, Kyle. Do you know what that is? I, I do not. You do not? You're our token. Oh, hell yeah. You're our token straight white boy. That means that you have <laughs> oh. the correct opinions, that you're the smartest one, everything. You know, you know, when, the, when... <laughs> the first time in my life. But see, when I was born, uh, the the doctor grabbed me by like my little pinky toe. He held me up. He said, "Yep, that's a fucking minority right there. It's a little fucking piece of shit." I'm and glad uh, he said he grabbed he, you by he, your pinky toe because that's not where I thought that was going. He, he, he then he swung me around by my fucking umbilical cord, fucking threw me at the wall. Said like, "That's what life's gonna be like for you." So you know what? It, it prepped me pretty well. <laughs> so yeah, you're special, Kyle. Just wanted to let you know that. This is the first time in my life I've ever been special, so I'm I'm honored. As, as you should be. I will do my best to represent white people. <laughs> I feel that, I feel <laughs> <laughs> I have a really low bar to clear to uh, set a good example. Straight yeah. white men. So I, I I think you're pretty golden for the most part. Uh, now the actual smartest person we have on the to the say show it's uh, Atma. How you doing? I, I I I'm going to immediately make everyone disregard that statement just by being. here. So, but I thank you for the uh, high bar that you just set. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got the gamer chair and everything. All I got is this fucking, what is this, Office Depot piece of shit. So, there I'm, you go. I, you got the most cred. I'm pretty sure me having the gamer chair makes me the stupidest person on the podcast. But only one of us has been drinking uh, Hard Mountain Dew, so... I wonder who, 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 would, who would show up drinking Hard Mountain Dews. This, this oh. podcast is not sponsored. I only have soft Mountain Dew. Only flaccid Mountain Dew? <laughs> yeah, Jesus take it out Christ. to dinner first uh, before it becomes hard Mountain Dew. Not, not until the third outing do you get hard Mountain Dew. Whoops, oh got a God. fucking fly right here. That's uh, what you deserve. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, let's just get into some quick little housekeeping, then we can get into the actual fun stuff, the, the fun bucks of, of it all. So yeah, feels good to be back here. There was a little bit of anxiety of coming back. I don't think we've done the show since I think October of last year. Just uh, just a whole bunch of stuff going on. Just felt like taking a break and uh, labeling it as like season two proper feels like a good way to come back to it. But, th but there's some like smaller changes that are going forward. Uh, it's going to be shorter length. We're only doing an hour at a time. Keep it nice and nice and short and sweet. That way people aren't getting tired halfway through. We kind of 
like focus on the good stuff. Don't feel like we have to stretch it out. As you can tell by our little baby shenanigans, there's going to be a little bit more of a comedic slam this time around. I don't know if they're going to be all as bad as this to throw the baby, but um, yeah, so, so it should be a fun time. We're all going to have a sacred vow and like religious chant that no one will get pissy with each other. If Kyle really likes a game and Atma's like, no, you're a fucking piece of shit. That game fucking sucks. Then you know what? Yeah. Nope. You fucking go all out. It's all good. There, there's that sacred vow. Uh, our fight to the death is what will happen off camera, though. That's, nah, the, you, that's the Patreon tier. You Five dollars a month, you get, you get access to the game session Fight Club. You, you, have, you have to pay sixty nine dollars for that Patreon tier, and you have to subscribe to Kyle's OnlyFans. So there you go. Well, the more people subscribe, the less often I post. Oh no! It's to your benefit, <laughs> it's to your benefit to pay me. I promise. Uh, shit, holding the world at ransom. Are, are, are you fucking pro Jared or something, bro? Oh God. Oh man, <laughs> I I I I don't know if ashamed is the word, but I definitely saw it. I'm like, oh man, that's uh, that that's something. Oh jeez. <sighs> Sorry if you're watching, man. That's just it, it looked weird, man. I don't know what to tell you. I've seen a lot, but man, that that's that's definitely one. Just the last change is uh, just just some small lineup changes. We have some more. We have some people coming on that I'm like super excited to have on. That doesn't mean their opinions are very good because his name is CJ. But you know what? It, it's it's whatever. I'm excited to have him on regardless. I'm having a brain fart. But yes, this is the first show of season two. Uh, we were supposed to record on Thursday, but Comcast kind of decided to, to butt fuck me on that instead, just not having internet for like a week and a half. Um, so yeah, it was just sitting at home rubbing my tummy sucking my toes as one does when one doesn't have internet because there's literally nothing to do on the planet uh Why did, did i agree to come on here <laughs> <laughs> It's gonna be a fun time. Second toes, rubbing tummies, fucking babies oh, throwing it all. I was I was blackmailed into this, so it's it's true. We we found your uh, your dank meme stash, and you didn't want us releasing it. So did anything stick out to anyone uh, for the uh, PlayStation State of Play that was on Thursday? Anything that looked cool or? at least interesting i mean i grew up on teenage mutant ninja turtle games so the collection where all of them are together is pretty neat because uh, i never thought i'd get to see them re-released since konami owned the originals there's a whole bunch of them in there too it's like six plus or something right well so it's it, i think it's over like 10 because they have like the arcade version and then also the nes version of the arcade game um, they have Hyperstone Heist as well as Turtles in Time, as well as the arcade version of Turtles in Time. Like they have every version that was released across multiple systems, several uh, game types. What's so the difference be between the uh, the arcade and like the I guess the console release? Um, so I know for the first arcade game, the N the, S the NES version added a couple extra levels, so, so there's a couple extra bosses. It's slightly longer, might be balanced slightly differently. In Turtles in Time, it's the same, like, bosses are changed around, there's some extra levels. I think, like, Slash, it shows up in the Teenage... Uh, the Turtles in Time Super Nintendo version, but it's like one of those rock warriors as the boss in the arcade version. Uh, so it's just random stuff like that. You get some extra bosses depending on which one you're playing. Did they say how much it was? Was it like a $20, $30 package? Or? I don't think they announced the price for it yet, just that it was I mean, It's definitely my childhood though. I remember me and my brother just playing the shit out of uh, Turtles in Time. We weren't very good at it, just a lot of dying, and you know, at least it was a console version, so you're not just like putting quarter <laughs> after quarter, yeah, uh, microtransactions before microtransactions. Do you, do you know the funny story between the Ninja Turtles and uh, Daredevil? Is this a setup for a bad joke? No, 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 I I, I know I'm smiling, I just like to smile, I'm a smiley guy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but no, we no. know there's some shit there. There's something. <laughs> no, there's nothing, I swear, I swear. The Turtles and um, Daredevil walk into a bar. <laughs> Oh fuck! No, no, so in Daredevil, the the ninja gang, uh, Yakuza, what, whatever you want to call them, their organization is called the Hand. And as a parody, the Ninja Turtles, the ninjas they fight are called the Foot. That's where that came from. Yeah, I never that, knew that. Huh. And then uh, the the ooze or whatever that blinded Daredevil, that's supposed to be the exact same ooze that turned the turtles into. Ninja Turtles. Imagine how shitty that has to be where like you see people get affected by the ooze and they get turned into really badass like talking 
turtles that are proficient in martial arts and all it does to you is make you blind i mean it gave him it bit. gave him like freaking daredevil vision so that's cool at least right is that is that a decent trade-off no why but not have can... actual vision actual vision is is probably better i would say i think if you ask daredevil what he would prefer I'm, I'm speaking with someone with working eyes but i don't know i daredevil vision is pretty cool like if someone goes to like shoot a gun at you from like a million hundred miles away and you can hear that shit that's pretty cool right yeah but i'd rather be able to nunchuck the bullets out of the air and then yeah, i mean you, you could do cowabunga. that Le okay. legally you can't scream cowabunga after doing something badass unless you're a, a teenage mutant ninja turtle would you rather get daredevil powers or be transformed into a giant eight foot walking ninja turtle oh no brainer giant eight foot walking turtle if you're trying to like take a dump and it's like peeking its head out a little bit are you giving birth to another turtle are you turtling or <laughs> jesus that's not even my joke. I sold that for my girlfriend. You can blame her for that. No, I'm crediting her for that. Ninja Turtles coming to, uh... It's coming to basically everything, isn't it? Yeah, it was announced for the the PlayStation on the state of play, but it's coming to Switch and Xbox and everything, too. Okay. Switch probably kind of seems like that'd be the best place to play it. It's all pixelated, anyway. Anything uh, stick out to you, Kyle, aside from your turtle? I, I actually... <laughs> I actually, I, I thought it was a kind of disappointing state of play just because most of the stuff, like the bigger things that were talked about are things that are already coming, like the, the Stranger Paradise, whatever demo, like, cool. We already know that game's coming. It's coming soon. There, there wasn't anything that had me like, oh my God, this is insane. This is life changing. I think I'm basically but, in the same boat. It I mean, it, like, like it, it's not, it wasn't bad. It just, I think expectations are usually high based on how like Nintendo Directs go and how the expectation for most of these things is always like, give us some sort of big announcement. Otherwise, why am I watching? Cause I could just watch, you know, just put out the trailers and I'll watch. But when they're putting, when they're making it a big event, then it makes me feel like, okay, well then there's going to be actually something big involved and there wasn't. So it was a little, a little disappointing, but also like, we also kind of know everything that's coming. So outside of giving big surprises, it's kind of hard to do anything that, that's going to like blow anyone away right now they're not going to do what nintendo does sometimes where they just like shadow drop complete games i i, I think it was the same for me and that and just like uh gauging the interest in it i'm just like because i think they announced beforehand it was going to be like what like 20 minutes focus on japanese games and i was just like you know what i'll just watch the ign fucking playlist of like all the trailers or whatever after the fact i, I wasn't like glued to my seat like oh shit i gotta watch this live like be part of the fucking hype whatever i, I still can't believe strangers of paradise the uh the final fantasy game is a thing with a fucking like lip biscuit and everything because it, it's writing that line for me i'm just like does this know it's stupid or is it just stupid and i have no idea at the moment so i we're gonna I, find I out to soon <laughs> i am so fascinated to see how this how it, it reviews because like it can go either way even after the demo like people are saying that you know it's it's like campy but good campy but also bad campy and like it's apparently in the demo there's a whole bunch of uh like graphical and like bug problems and that sort of thing so it's unpolished but also like it it really feels like those old you know like dirge of cerberus and oh god you know, it comes out like uh, what six days too right yeah yeah like it comes out next week and i i just it's exciting for me because like we haven't gotten this like solid mid-tier game that is like bad but also like could be a cult classic sort of game in a long time like everything's either been like these triple a awesome like you know elden ring horizon you know blowouts or like super coveted indie games and whatnot you don't get that like mid mid-level sort of like well this is rad but sort of like weird yeah. games anymore and like this this is one of those games for sure i was gonna say it's also nice to have a game that like there's no real people don't really have expectations for it it's not like it's something that like you're mentioning it's not like super hyped and people are really excited about it which also means can't really be you can't really be disappointed by something you were never excited for and then at the same time because nobody's super excited for it there's a chance that it does kind of become that like cult classic like hey that was that's kind of neat i just need to know how dedicated to limp biscuit it is I, like how much of that meme factor it's really riding on the, but, the level of dedication to Limp Bizkit uh, coincides directly with my level of enjoyment in the game. Exactly. 
But uh, going to what you were saying, Altma, like, yeah, I, I miss that, like, kind of, like, middle tier where it's not, like, super high production values. It's just kind of, like, middle of the road. You, you would get, like, you would genuinely get, like, some cool creative uh, things in there. And uh, that's kind of, like, mostly being relegated to, like, indies or, like, maybe, like, the rare AAA game that puts, like, a cool thing out there. Th there was a game that just came out, I think it was last week, uh, Shadow Warrior 3. Like, that. that's, like, the definition, middle of the road. Not high production, it's not technically the greatest, but man, I had a fucking great time with the last two, and uh, I, I, I I could really swim in those uh, 7 out of 10s for a long while. The all, yeah. Only 8s and 9s and ten, perfect games, Elden Ring? Pff, fuck that, dude. I, I, I need I need my 7s right there. That That's the good shit. As far as stuff that they showed, I, I think I'm kind of the same camp. I was kind of iffy. I know Sylvia, if she, if she was on the show today, she'd probably be geeking out about uh, Gundam Evolution. It's like a first-person uh, arena shooter. We were playing his Gundam so that's cool because they're big giant robots and shooting stuff is cool and robots are cool and shooting robots is cool so that's cool. Returnal is getting a co-op campaign. I, I think it's a new campaign or if it's the same one I don't know. I'd have to look it up. But yeah, super, super excited to jump into that. Love the base game. I know Corey's addicted to it as well. So we, we can die together and it'll be nice and platonic, platonically romantic out the way we die over and over together, holding each other's arms, rubbing each other's bellies, you know, sucking toes. So that'll be cool. <laughs> hey, I do not have any uh toe fungus i'll let i will let you know i keep that shit clean please stop saying toe <laughs> were, were you traumatized by a toe did you watch um i know it wasn't toes but did you, did you ever see spy kids the walking thumb people or whatever oh my god did you watch that and get scarred as a child i just hate feet like it's just oh god like if, um, uh, if those those monsters in Elden Ring were like giant feet spiders. I don't know if I'd be able to play oh, the game. Like that would just creep me out. I, I will refrain from making uh, some egregious uh, foot puns for your behalf, for your for your sanity. I've already tortured you enough. <laughs> I was just say, just to, to change the subject off of feet, I have done some extensive research on the Returnal Ascension expansion, and it is just adding co-op to the main campaign as well as adding like an endless horde mode. But the expansion it, it's very similar to elden rings where your progress is tied to the progression is tied to the host's account so if you're bringing someone in to help and they come and join you to help they don't actually get credit in their own playthrough but you get it in yours so it it is okay. interesting it's gonna be neat is um, it a is it paid or free i would assume it's good. free if it's just like adding if, if it's not like a different it is a free right? update it, it is a free update which honestly makes me so i i have not played returnal Oh, dude, I'll totally play with you. Returnal's fucking dope. I was say, adding in co-op definitely makes me more likely to want to check it out. So I'm I'm looking forward to that. Oh, yeah. See, this is why we have the... the well, I, I already told Atma she, she was the smartest person on the podcast. This is why we have second per smartest person on the show, Kyle, here to do research on the fly. I, gu I guess the only other thing that was, like, super interesting to me... Like, they showed Ghostwire Tokyo, but that's already coming out. Like, I already know I'm going to get it. It's like, whatever. I don't need any more information. Exo Primal. It's a, it's a Capcom game where you're just minding your own business, sitting there, looking up at the sky and like, Neo Tokyo or whatever. And the giant portal opens in the sky, and then all these dinosaurs just come flooding out, like freaking sardines or something, and start attacking stuff. And you're, whoever you're playing as is like, oh no, I don't like that. So they get in a big old uh iron man suit and you're going around fighting dinosaurs it looks it looks fucking cool um i know i know a lot of people felt kind of teased that it was going to be like a dino crisis game for a second because it has like the character with red hair or whatever and then it went yeah no we're, we're gonna jump in mech suits and shoot dinosaurs because mechs are cool and shooting dinosaurs is cool and shooting dinosaurs while you're in a mech suit is double cool they combined anthem with dino crisis yeah it's someone at capcom is smoking crack and it seems to have paid off so you know what maybe addiction is a solution to all the world's problems <laughs> i don't know what to tell you japan's weird like this is gonna be a little bit of a segue so i know like people i like i like the persona games i think they're fun as hell but a lot of people like over the years have started like criticizing just like you know it's probably kind of weird you're playing these games and you're like dating fucking high schoolers and they're like fucking like 15 or whatever and then there's like an option in five i, I think the person's like 13 and people are just like ew these fucking devs are fucking gross as shit letting you date fucking kids or whatever i'm just like 
I don't know. I, I feel like that, that's more of a Japanese problem. J Japan's age is like super low. But you know what? If we're getting mechs, fighting dinosaurs, I think everything else wrong with the country is totally fine, right? These are, these are the essential sacrifices we need to get mechs fighting dinosaurs. And you know what? I don't know where I'm going with that. Well, you know, if it was up to Western developers, we would never get mechs fighting dinosaurs. We'd get a really sad dad, and he'd see the dinosaurs come out, and it would cause him to go out into the middle of nowhere and get a whole bunch of introspection on him and figure out that, oh, he's actually really happy and not sad, and then he'd go and, like, befriend a dinosaur, and then the dinosaur would die, and he'd go on a rampage at the end, and then there'd be, like, this philosophical question about, was this all right or wrong or not? And... Then we'd get like another sequel or two and everyone would turn on it because then they kill the dad at the very beginning and it all would just be <laughs> terrible. Oh, uh, shit. If it, was, if it was like real American, the, the the child you're looking after to like bring, to like be the cure for all the world's problems, it turns out it was just your handgun the entire time. And then like as you get there, just like, look, I have the solution to all the world's problems. It's just, it's just a fucking AR-15. And then eagles fly up and there's a flag and explosions and shit. You know, you don't even have to name it anything else. Just name that game America. There you go. Fucking, <laughs> fucking uh, buy, buy me out for that pitch, Activision. You can do it. I don't know if they have time between harassing people, but you know what? I, I, I don't have faith in them at all. Let's see. So you two have been playing Elden Ring. Both the three of us have also played Horizon. I guess let's jump into Horizon a little bit. That, that should be a fun little thing that we can do. But let's do a proper story introduction. And I just want to shout out the de developers at Guerrilla Games because, you know, they're, I believe, Danish, right? They're in Denmark. The Denmarkians, the Denmarkies. I believe it's Danish, right? I'm not wrong on that. Don't you eat Danishes? I don't. I don't like bread. Fuck bread. <laughs> I don't fuck with any of that shit. Oh yeah, keep, bread. Keep, it's keep, the worst. Keep vamping while I while I rack my memory. <laughs> that uh, definitely they're, they're Dutch. Dutch. Is that the thing? I'm gonna Google that right now. Oh, that I'm makes just, that makes sense because they're just fucking high all the time. Then yeah. Yeah, I'm just I'm just doing this purely from memory, of course. You know, I, I believe I you're right. I didn't look it up. I didn't look it up or anything. As a straight white male, we we know that I know everything. <laughs> <laughs> lacking in knowledge. Uh. Fucking shit. And it's censorship if you tell me that's not true. So I will I will make an angry tweet about it. And then a bunch of old white ladies are going to give me money. Well, you know, despite my complexion, I am indeed uh, what, what Kyle's people might refer to as a dirty brown. So I'm glad we have an ascended one here to, to give us the proper knowledge of how the world works. That's right. You could join me in my massive grift and you could just you could just tell them, you know, like, hey, don't worry. I'm, I'm I, you know, I, I may I may be brown, but I also hate brown people. And then they'll give you money. too. turns out they're really dumb with who they give their money to. Is there a Candace you Owens of like Mexican people? Is uh, there an equivalent yeah. thing? We're, we're gonna make one. Oh shit! You just I have to change your last name to Owens. I don't know if I can do that. No, that's a step too far. Uh, all right. Then, yeah, gorilla, gorilla. They are Here. they are Dutch. They are from the there. Dutch area. If they go on a plane to visit uh, Sony America, are they called the Flying Dutchman? Can see, I can't. I can't. I, I can't. That's what I say. I can't gauge Kyle's face. All I see is his Twitter face. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the story of Horizon Zero Dawn. Um, you play as the most persecuted, uh, most persecuted minority of all time in all human existence, a, uh, a ginger girl, a Variety magazine ginger girl. Um, you know, it's it's very accurate to real life because you know you're born from a machine, as all gingers are, and you get ostracized for that. Which you know you probably had your way coming, being fucking born from a machine and all that shit. It's kind of your fault. I don't know what to tell you. And like gingers, gingers, like I'm very pro like people, you know, I like to think of myself as, as fairly progressive, but gingers deserve to be oppressed. They're not human. <laughs> oh, shit. I feel kind of bad because I feel like someone might take that seriously. No, it's all holds barred. We, the, the, the no pissy vow go, goes for the audience as well. If you're watching, you, 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 you're, you're partaking in this. I don't know what to tell you. If you're a, if you're a ginger and you're upset, tweet angry things at me, and then gotta, I will I will tweet you pictures of my feet. Why you gotta Why you gotta fucking throw hands with Ronald Weasley, dude? What did he ever do? To no, you? I'm, I'm not I'm not throwing hands. I'm throwing feet. Is is Ron Weasley a ginger? Or is he just a what's the difference between a ginger and a redhead? No, nothing. Is it like freckles or something? I think ginger is like a state of mind. You know, <laughs> you decide to be ginger. <laughs> oh shit. 
But you know what? Uh, a Aloy's not that bad. She has rosacea. I have rosacea, which, you know, like, increases her asshole-ness by, like, 50%. So you know what? At least she has that going for her. But, uh, so, c coming off the back of Horizon Zero Dawn, Forbidden West... Um, it turns out the thing you killed isn't dead, and, uh, Aloy doesn't really like that. So you have to go west to track down Lance Riddick, because he sounds really cool, and you just want to be around him as much as you can, because he sounds cool. But you have to go west, and, uh, there's, like, these different tribes, they kind of had a falling out with the main governments that you've been around. And so you kind of have to go around fixing, like, their little political issues so that you can go further west and find out what the heck's going on. And, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's basically, I think, as much as you can say about the story of Forbidden West without getting, like, too spoilery. The, the only thing I'll say is the biggest appeal of the story of Horizon Zero Dawn was figuring out why the world is the way it is. Like, and they go into, like, so much detail. Like, why are the machines like this? Why, if this is, a, is an apocalypse, why is there vegetation? And so unraveling that was, like, was genuinely probably my favorite part of the entire game for the, uh, for the original title and once you already have those cards laid out in the sequel there's not that appeal they they, they do something a little bit different but it's not really the same would, would would you guys say that's pretty accurate yeah i'd say it's fair yeah like i i think it takes a little while for it to get going they do drop a fairly early like when you fairly early on once you like find lance riddick like they drop a pretty big story bomb that is just sort of like what and it's it's a different kind of what the fuck it's definitely not the same though now that you sort of know the world and it how it exists and it's just like yeah it, it is a, it was a little bit sort of it's laughing. like going from a it's like it's like going from an S tier mystery to like maybe like a B tier mystery and just like even a com like it, there's nothing wrong with it like in of itself it's just in comparison it's a little bit of a drop yeah. well and i feel like i mean there was no real option otherwise like you can't you can't really up the ante on the mystery there when when you've already done the big reveal of how the world became the way it is and all that so like i don't fault them for it yeah but i do i do think your point about it being not as narratively like compelling jaw jaw dropping in terms of like the the twists and turns and stuff like that but i thought the narrative that that we got in the story was still very interesting i thought the characters felt felt interesting i think the, the story and all the different things that come to play i think they were pretty good the the twists and turns that they had to do without without getting spoilery felt a little paint by numbers it was it was you know whether it was things like is this person going to be good or bad and things like a lot of things were things that you could kind of see coming but again like there's so many things you can do to to do twists that are super new and that that feel completely fresh so i didn't think any of it was bad it just uh and, and honestly i will talk a little bit more when we get to elden Ring. like like it would have been and at one point it was probably probably going to be my game of the year for the way it really appealed to me but i think this one the focus was less on the twists and less on the shock factor and more on okay we've seen why the world is the way it is we've seen how the world is now can we bring this world that's left together to save it which i thought was a really interesting you know and really kind of one of the only few directions to go with a sequel and i thought they did a very good job of it i thought they really did a good job with all the uh character stuff too like not not even necessarily the main quest just sitting there chatting with with your companions and your your little mass effect base i just everyone was really well written you come to like really care about all of them yeah um, like i one of the things is that like the fur in the first game the real big hook and what kept me going and and what like we've already talked about is that like that through line story of like mystery what's going on and everything that was what shown while like all the side characters and like anything that what you know wasn't ted pharaoh like sort of didn't matter like all the actual people they barely had personalities like i couldn't remember half of the people when they got reintroduced in forbidden west but like forbidden west does a lot better of developing these characters and your allies and now i haven't finished the whole thing yet but like as, as far as i am right now like it's been a lot more interesting and like the characters and 
people that you talk to and everything all feels better. And it's now that it's not just the mystery. It, it's funny that you mentioned the, uh, the the side characters not really being important in um, in the first game because uh, it's not really much spoiler. Like it, it opens whatever, and your buddy comes up to you like, "Hey, look, it's me, Varl from the first game. We're like best friends." And I had to sit there. I'm just like, "Who the fuck are you?" I I, I played through Horizon three times and I barely remember who this dude is. Yeah, uh, but uh, no, they they definitely take that. They actually do something worthwhile this time around, so that's cool. This this is maybe like a tangentially related thing, but Kyle, how the fuck did you beat this game so soon? Like, I I, I want your ability to just be able to mainline the the main am, quest, not do any of the side shit. I I, I just want, I'm so mad because somehow like it took me six months to beat Final Fantasy fourteen, and he blew through it in like a month and a half. He's beaten Elden Ring like three times already, and I'm like halfway through it. He beats Horizon before her Elden Ring comes out. Like, how do you do it? I'm uh, so God, you, you do so much shit with your life. You're such like an accomplished motherfucker. You're you're well, juggling all uh, this stuff, right. and you still manage to get through it. I'm just like, man, it's a, it's a, it's a fucking white boy powers or something. I don't know what to tell you, man. You're fucking magical. Well, it is an unhealthy ability to function on little to no sleep. Yeah, I do also not always spend a lot of t don't always spend a lot of time exploring and doing optional side stuff, um, which uh, and again let's talk a little bit later with with Elden Ring because it's actually changed my my approach. But a lot of times I will I will do for things that I know are going to be a massive undertaking and I know I only have limited time. I do as much as I can to just mainline the story and the, the most important side things. If there's a random obscure NPC in an area, I'm not necessarily going to do their side content, but if it involves characters that are directly involved with the story, I'm going to do what I can. And then if I feel like, okay, this isn't doing anything for the narrative, then I'm going to move on. Um, and, and a lot of times I've gone back to games later and done side things, but it's just in, in the moment where I only have so much time to play things and so many things that I want to play, it's usually spent less doing that. It takes a lot for a game to make me want to spend the little extra time I have to, to do all the extra side things. But it definitely is also like one of those things where it's just I'll start playing at like, you know, four or five in the afternoon and play until like four or five in the morning. Shit. It, it, it can be or start at like eight in the morning and play till 10 o'clock at night. It's just it's, it's not a healthy approach, but I, I just lose track of time when I get really into stuff. And as I'm making progress, it's like, oh, I just, you know, I'm almost done with this chapter. No, or oh there's only three chapters left and it just becomes just, just uh, continuous there's always a new reason to keep going uh, no, you're, you're the party is, is is kyle the normal one and it, it's just my mild autism brain that won't allow me to mainline shit or, or is kyle the weird one i i i honestly i don't know because i can't i cannot just mainline anything either but i definitely have ooh shiny problems like i if i have to Anytime a game says go this way, I immediately go the opposite direction. Like I, it, it is just functionally, I cannot just mainline. <laughs> I've tried so hard. I, I got to the point where I just started ignoring like the question marks. I'm just like, if it's not like a marked side quest or whatever, I'm not going to bother with it. But uh, that said, the um, game of Platinum is not that bad. It's just wrapping up like some of the more major side quests. So if you're a trophy hunter, there you go. It's not that bad. Um, I guess just to jump over to the gameplay, and then we can jump over to Elden Ring. I, I don't get why some people don't... Or I don't get why people tend to, I want to say, kind of trash the combat. Because I really... That, that's probably one of the biggest appeals of the game to me is... Because you have so many different weapons to choose from. Different elements, enemies, weak points. They have their own strengths and weaknesses. There's melee. Just like, yeah, ev every single battle I would go into, there's like a million different ways you can go about it. And um, this has like so many more machines than the previous game, and each kind of machine has like three, four different variants too. So you're just kind of scanning to see what you're doing on the fly, swapping weapons out. Um, admittedly, this this time around, I was a little bit of a basic bitch. I would just stick with a hunter bow, just chipping off uh, components to get the uh, to get like little chunks of damage off of them. But no, I, I I loved every minute of playing this game. I do feel like they made some of the things worse like the bow feels the best to use this time around like i find myself not using the trip wires and the rope caster as much as i did 
when I was playing Zero Dawn because it doesn't feel like they have as much effect. I don't think they go as far either because I remember yeah. in the first game you could you could set them pretty damn far. Yeah. It, it it's it just it. I think that's the only complaint I have about the combat. Like everything else is fine. Like I love shooting parts off robot dinosaurs. It's fun to you know take on a thunder jaw and remove its cannons and then destroy it with its own weapon. You know, so, I, I was I was rewatching a um, a documentary that No Clip did on the first game, and they said the first enemy they tested out with like the gameplay was the thunder jaw. I'm just like, oh yeah, that, I guess that figures. That's why that's like the funnest enemy to fight. That's why it has so many components you can shoot off and use its own weapons and shit. It's uh. Man, I, I just love the gameplay here. But uh, yeah. one one complaint, uh, I I kind of I kind of stopped complaining about it as I went on. Um, the climbing, like the you, you scan to see what you can climb, and like on one hand, she's like, oh, it's like diegetic. She has like the focus. That makes sense. But like as you're playing the game, you're just like, I don't know. This feels a little bit too video gamey, where you're telling me exactly where I can go, versus. Um, like, I know the industry's been trying pretty hard to, like, move away from Uncharted 2's, like, oh, look, that brick is yellow, that probably means you can climb onto it. But that still feels more natural than, like, literally highlighting everything you can climb in the world. Yeah, like, so, and, it, well, again, this is, like, pre-Elden Ring sort of, like, teasing, but, like... I am tired of the focus in all the games. Like every game has a version of Batman you know, vision, fucking, Witcher yeah, vision, Hitman vision, uh, Ghost of Tsushima vision. Like every game has that stupid thing. It's where you can see where everything is. And like going into Elden Ring where it's just like, you gotta fucking look for stuff. You don't get a, a special button that reveals all the little collectibles you just either pick them up or you don't mm -hmm. um like I, I i hate that because also like i feel like i have to be clicking it all the time because of that thing where the world is designed in a way where you have one specific place on this mountain you need to climb to get to the top to get to do whatever you need to do and that's the way the level and the world is designed. So they design around people clicking that all the time. So you have to have it on all the time just to know where you're going. Whereas... It's, and it's not you, even a toggle. You have to like constantly be pressing it like every 20 exactly. steps or whatever. And like I have to... It, it's the So it just like affects the game design. And like there is a little bit without it, but it's, it's still is helping like after i spent like 10 minutes fucking up dinosaurs and then i have to be hitting the focus button constantly to make sure i picked up all the parts that i blew off because i wasn't able to do it while i'm being chased down uh like you it, know, feels and, like, it feels like it feels like there should have just been like an option in the settings just like hey do you just want like these pickup things to always show yeah, instead yeah, of because it's yeah. weird like uh the there is setting for that Oh, is there? Okay, well, fuck me then. I'm not as smart as Kyle. <laughs> I, I know there was. I thought there was a setting. I know there was a setting for like the the cliff sides and like re the where to climb. I didn't realize there was one for the items too. Oh shit! Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's there's one for both because I that's you guys are talking about like having this problem with this and I I didn't have this problem only because I turned those on knowing that that was the thing that was gonna frustrate me. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it, it's it, it's kind of buried, which I don't like when things like that get get buried up in in settings. You got to dig for it to find it, but. Yeah, there, there's some stuff in there that makes that a less of a, a nuisance, which was nice. Damn, I, sh I should have put that on. I know, um, I think like the lot, is that like an accessibility thing or is that just like in video or whatever? I think it's under accessibility, if I recall correctly. Um, cause I remember there, there was something like that that I turned on in um, The Last of Us 2. It, it's, uh, it's like an auto pickup, so you don't have to like mash triangle to pick shit up. And like, it was nice. But then I'm just like, oh wait, no, now I don't even, now I don't know what I'm picking up because I don't have like the visual, just like, oh, that's exactly what I'm doing, triangle, whatever. But yes, yeah, uh, so this just shows where the loot is. It doesn't, which is nice, doesn't automatically pick it up for you, but it shows where the loot is and like what tier it is, of loot it is, which is nice. So you it, still get that, like, yeah, I know exactly what I'm picking up, but it's not as much of it, a pain to have to find everything. 
it feels weird visually because it's like you can see like Ridgewood from like a mile away. It's a big, tall, freaking like bear, twigs, whatever. But then all, all the other items, they have like these little blue butterflies to like to denote like, hey, you should probably pick this shit up. Um, but then they kind of just have it where you have to scan also. I guess that's optional, but um, I, I, I kind of wish it didn't do because I, I, I know the first game had this. And this was before Red Dead 2, but the Red Dead 2 vacation of like picking shit up where you have to like go over to it, you have to pick it, it takes like a second or two. And like this one, it's not too bad, it's just a quick little thing. But with the amount of shit you're picking up, it would have been nice if you could just keep your full sprinting momentum and pick shit up. But that's, yeah. that's I, I would love to see the tracker see exactly how many things I picked up and like just multiply that by like however long it takes to grab it be like, oh, I spent two hours of this game doing nothing but picking up twigs. That's cool. It's 100% Crafting. why I couldn't get into Red Dead 2 yeah. because of how long it took to pick stuff up. It just, it just got so frustrating. It, it's weird because like the, like the optimal way to play that game is to like loot everyone you kill, but it's just like, okay, well, I killed 30 dudes and I got to walk over to each of them. It's going to take five seconds to loot them. It's, it's fucking annoying. Crafting needs to stop being a thing. Like I don't I like crafting in games. I, appre I can appreciate it if crafting has like its place like minecraft is a game where you craft things that's fine but like you don't need to jam it into every game that exists like elden ring does not need craft i'm sorry like i love the game it but i fucking have crafted like <laughs> two items the entire game like it has, it does not need it I I'm fucking collecting these stupid cookbook i'm sorry it's all like song <laughs> Go out my go. Fucking rip it off. <laughs> now someone's gonna come find me on Twitter and like say I, you know, hate everything because I dared criticize Elden Ring for something. Uh, fuck Twitter people. Twitter people don't know what's up. Yeah, um, crafting in most games just feels like an add-on, and and like, and, and uh, like with, um, with Horizon, I just crafted when I needed to refill inventory for stuff it's like i'd much rather just go to an npc and buy it it's way to easier. Like, oh you have to you have to find the right resources and then you have to craft it and it's like okay but this is just artificially getting me to play more but it's getting me to do the thing that i don't want to do in this game which is which is hunt down resources that's not the appeal of this game i got into so many situations there, there's like those explosive uh spears you can throw whatever and um they use like rare resources i'm just like well fuck i don't want to craft any of that shit those are like rare resources i only got like 30 of those and so I, I just hate running to that shit like if it's just like ammo you pick up i would have been fine with it um uh, i will say it's nice that um that, like your stuff will get like automatically sent to your stash instead of like just it all cl cluttering your inventory because that was a big issue in the first game just like oh i have too much wood i can't pick up this mission critical thing i need to pick up um, and Aloy will let you know every time. Aloy, I'm not, I'm not trying to be, I'm not trying to be that guy. Not trying to be misogynist or nothing. But man, that ginger girl does not shut the fuck up. She, it's like every five seconds. I wonder. Th this will mostly go in my stash. I can pick this up from my stash. This will go in my stash. I can pick this up from my stash. My stash. I should check my stash. <laughs> stash. Stash. <laughs> stash. <laughs> I can climb that. I can try use it by rope. It's, it's man, she like. I, I think they actually put a patch out to like slightly reduce it, but I was still mm. playing it when they pushed it out. I was just like, yeah, oh, no, it's still it's still a bit much. It's, it's not like the worst thing in the world. It's mostly just funny. I, like the thing that bothers me the most, like it, it's yeah, it's not like objectively a bad thing, but there were several times it, when I was playing where I would get into a new area and Aloy would tell me the solution to an environmental puzzle before I even had a chance to check out the entire area. She was already like, I should check out that platform. I should jump over there. I should pull this thing down. Like, give me a chance to do it. It's like, it's like shit, I was only here for five seconds. I don't, <laughs> I don't even turn the camera around. Who's playing this game? Are you playing me? Like, is there something weird going on here? It's, uh, yeah, it, it, it's something. It, it, like, like, I wouldn't mind, like, if it was just, like, a button prompt, like, hey, you want a hint? And then she'll speak up or whatever, but 
She, she's really eager to get that shit. You know what? The world's dying on me. She doesn't have time to fuck around with our dumb asses trying to solve this puzzle. You gotta get shit done. It, it is in character for Aloy to have absolutely no patience. So, you know, maybe I, maybe it's intentional. She's traveling the world all by herself. She's kind of, kind of a loner. I guess it makes sense that she talks to herself all the time. Mm -hmm. Leaving little... Maybe she's leaving like little Bioshock diaries for everyone to listen to. Ah, uh, shit. But you know what? Let's, uh... I, I haven't played it, but the two of you have, have been uh, very very deep in Elden Ring, if you want to jump into that. And then even if... Because uh, I, I was going to mention the open world for Horizon, but these are like two like such polar opposites to how to approach open worlds, quests. Uh, not even linearity, I guess, but just complete polar opposites if you two want to jump into that. I actually, I actually don't know if I find them to be polar opposites in terms of their approach to the open world. It, it actually, it, it actually feels somewhat similar, especially like even just the concept of like traveling around in Horizon. In order to get new fast travel points, you have to go to bonfires. Um, I, I, I think, think the big difference. I think it's more so like all like right. the icons and shit and like stuff like being yeah. like explicitly labeled, right? Yeah, I think that's that's really the only big difference is just nothing in Elden Ring gives you a a label or a quest guide everything is just figured out which can sometimes be a little bit frustrating shout out to people who write guides on the internet for helping my dumbass out but i think in general i, I thought the approach was, is is somewhat similar i, I don't think I, I think the big thing with both of them is neither of the open worlds feel empty they feel like everywhere i go there is something happening whether it's environmentally, whether it's with, with other characters in the game, there's things to fight, there's different things to fight, there's different scenery you're seeing, different paths, different weather, like there's just different things. It doesn't feel like, oh God, I'm about to have to go through this giant ass plane and it's gonna take me 30 minutes to ride through it and I'm gonna see like five enemies and what was the point of making it this big? I, I thought with both, even though they're they're fairly large open worlds, it feels very like traveling through the world feels fun. It feels neat. I'm someone who is so burnt out by open world games, but I found myself in both of them not really fast traveling that often, unless I was trying to get something done quickly. But I was kind of like, yeah, I don't mind going for the ride because there's some cool shit that happens. And obviously in, in Elden Ring, a lot of times you just get random things popping out at you and scaring the shit out of you. But even in Horizon, it was just like, it was just cool to go through the environment and uncover the stuff that was around. So I, th I thought both did a really good job of, of filling out their open worlds. I, yeah. I enjoyed it. Did, did I, we really need four giant open world games in like this short of span? There, there was Pokemon Arceus, Dying Light 2 with well, its fucking 500 hours or whatever, uh, Horizon, and now Elden Ring. They're all just fucking giant open world games. Did we, like I, I, I'm with you. I'm fucking sick of open world games, with with some of these kind of maybe being the exception. But I'm still just like, fuck. I just give me some, carry something nice and short. Give, give me a uh, Shadow Warrior three. Give me give me Low Wang. I, I think yeah, I would, for me, I would. Go ahead, go. <laughs> um, I, I was just gonna say. I think for me, like, I definitely appreciate games like Horizon and Elden Ring, where like the open world feels on purpose, where it's like. When I'm exploring an Elden Ring, I can find shit and it'll be interesting. Like, I will find a new item. I may not be able to use it, but like, hey, I found this really cool axe because I dared to go into this random area and there were some enemies and a cool chest in this area. Um, or like Horizon, I'll find a new dinosaur that I haven't fought yet and get some new parts and maybe be able to craft something new. God, crap. But like... You, you'll get to go into these new areas and be like, oh, this is something neat. I'm rewarded for exploring this open world. Um, and then you have something like Assassin's Creed. And I'm, I'm going off of Odyssey because I didn't play Valhalla. But like Assassin's Creed Odyssey had a massive open world and a whole bunch of question marks on your map to find. But you never found anything interesting at the question marks. It was fucking collectibles that, like, once you got 50 of them, a trophy popped up. 
or you know a random i don't know bear like you you don't get anything and you're spending like 20 minutes between question marks because the world is massive because what they think we want is giant world and like we want i'd rather have a dense world that's smaller than a gigantic open world that takes me 20 minutes to walk around uh just to get from point a to b because i'm not looking at anything in the world it's just like god i, I don't want to i'm not doing anything it's why why am i traveling i if i wanted to spend 20 minutes uh, going from point A to point B, I'd like drive to, you know, an arcade or something. I can don't, travel don't, on my own time. Don't you want a uh, Assassin's Creed Odyssey sized uh, Yakuza game? No. Big. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely with you mm -hmm. on there. Like, the, the denser the better. As long as there's interesting shit, I just don't want big open planes of fucking nothing going on. And it, it seems like Elden Ring kind of delivers on that. Um, How's how's the story in Elden Ring? Is it a little bit more more explicit than uh, the rest of the series? I know I know Sekiro is probably like the most straightforward, except with like maybe some of the lore stuff. F from what I've gathered from it, it's uh, so you're in this land, you're tarnished, uh, you got zero bitches, you got zero maidens, and you don't know what's going on because Vati Video hasn't made a YouTube video, and that's that's the story of Elden Ring. Yeah, yeah, like, I would put it somewhere between Sekiro and Dark Souls. Like, it's a little more explicit than what happens in Dark Souls, but it's still very vague, and, like, I kind of know what I'm doing, and I have I completed a, a, a completely optional side quest with a, with a major character, and I vaguely am aware of what I accomplished, but... I'm not actually sure, you know, it, it's, it's still very much from soft storytelling and yeah, I'm, there's some, been some, some cooler cutscenes. So like they went out of their way to make things more interesting. There's a lot of it still kind of like in item descriptions and like piecing together, like, uh, like other little pieces of information together. There is a little bit of that. There, there's a lot more like explicit. I can sit down and talk to people and like listen to lore. Uh, in the in this one, like there's a there's a turtle pope, and you can just like talk to him, and he like just sits you down and says like, "All right, this is what happened, and I'm explaining this faction to you now." Um, did you say turtle pope? I did there say turtle, turtle pope. pope. That shit. <laughs> Anyway, good. Um, yeah, so like you can get information from people. Like there is options to talk to when, once you you get a maiden. Once you're no longer a virgin, there are times when you can like sit around a campfire and talk to your maiden, and like she'll give you some info. You know, they get chatty after you do your thing with them. Sorry, is that wrong for me to say? I don't. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> The, the thing that so for me it, it it's my first from game, so I can't compare it to previous games. And the thing that frustrated me is that, and I say this is someone who like I this is arguably one of my favorite games of all time. Like I I cannot put it down, and I can't remember the last time a game has made me feel this way. But it is frustrating when there's a lot of time spent figuring out. I don't even know who I could go to to find out more. And so I've I've been lucky enough to find different guides for different quest lines that that have given me more context. But in terms of just trying to find them in the game, it's so the the idea of explore and find stuff out can be detrimental at times. And I understand purists are going to get angry and say, but that's how it's meant to be. And uh, that's the, the intended experience. And it's like, OK. But I also think a little bit of it is just some lazy writing. I mean, I know the, the, the memes about George R. R. Martin being involved in helping create the world. And also he's notorious for like not finishing uh, stories. And so there's a lot of this that's kind of left open ended. Like the main story itself, you can get the gist of it. And by the time you finish, you're like, yeah, I, I understood what's going on. And then you think, 
Okay. But to get any of the side stuff, there's like no, like it's hard to it's hard to feel like the side characters play a super big role unless you go out of your way to like find these super obscure like one of the quest lines is in one of the one of the dungeon legacy dungeons that you go through and like you can find a guy but in order to find him you have to take these like super random obscure hidden paths and it's like okay it's cool to do that exploring but like that was a that felt like a pretty pretty important story there and most people are never going to experience it because Who's gonna find that? And so, like, if you put all that effort to put that stuff in your game, make it so people can find, like, I don't know, I don't know. It's just frustrating. I, I, a, I, I want to do more of the side stuff, and I never want to do side stuff. I, I think when it comes to Souls games, I have typical Kyle brain in which I don't give a fuck about the story of any of the Souls games. I've played all of them. I've beaten all of them. I just don't give a flying fuck about the story. Like, it's all entirely. Uh, let me fight enemies and bosses that are gonna like butt fuck me. That, that's what I'm into. I uh, so so like Elden Ring does a better job, I think, of giving you hints as to what to do. Like, in there are certain merchants that you can just like buy uh, random notes from, and there'll be like hints of things in the world. And normally in other Souls games how you find out those hints is you go to the souls wiki and someone else has already explained to you how to open this hidden door or whatever so like in game they have added more things to make it a little less obscure and weird and like i've found figured out stuff on my own a lot in in elden ring uh I've also had to look stuff up, specifically with a lot of like NPC quests, like the the side stories and like actual story-ish related content is still very obscure. And a lot of times you just feel like you got lucky if you managed to progress it far enough. Like I had one guy, I found him in a dungeon and then he came, he showed up at the hub world and I talked to him and i thought he was going to have a bigger quest and now every time i talk to him he's basically dead and he's probably going to be dead very shortly because this is a, a souls game um and i have no idea if i missed something if there was more to do with his quest if i just advanced things too far and like missed an opportunity and like those sorts of things never you know are explained and they don't get any better in this game um that's that's a little disappointing here yeah uh kyle you specifically this is your first um souls game you've gotten into was there anything in particular that kind of like gave you the push to want to jump in and did kind of like the reputation for these games i mean like really hard did that kind of like hamper your excitement or you're just like fuck i don't want to do this and then you just kind of caved in Oh, the the reputation for Souls games is 100% why I've never played one. I don't I don't want to be good at video games, and so a game that requires you to be good was super not appealing to me. But after it had come out, that first the first like two days it was out, I had people I knew who had either reviewed it or were playing it when it had come out that were saying it was the most welcoming to newer players because if if you're run if you're bashing your head into something and not able to get through it, you can leave and explore other stuff and level up and then come back later. It, you don't have to always get stuck on the same to progress the main story you have to get through certain things but there's so much to do otherwise that feels rewarding and you can start small with smaller dungeon bosses and feel better about yourself for getting those clears and then you can finally make your way to the, to the bigger stuff. so that's how it's been for me it was a it was definitely a steep learning curve but it did feel like okay i can i can go away and play something else and i will say i've heard for years that oh yeah it's really hard but the, the reward for when you kill the boss you know after struggling for hours it feels so good and i was like shut the fuck up i was like that's that's garbage you're just trying to make yourself feel better about spending all that time on a boss and then i spent 16 hours trying to get through one boss and finally got through them and uh, the feeling was orgasmic so turns out people weren't <laughs> lying it does feel really fucking good to to learn how to beat these things and figure when you finally get it like once it clicks 
how the different boss operates or how these things work it's just like oh my god that was first of all that was brilliant in the way they created it and also like i'm a genius for figuring it out and then well, something happens and you get screwed then you get screwed over by some stupid last minute uh you were standing one frame too close and you get screwed over and die and i had that happen a couple times and it was it was infuriating and then it was like well back at it again we were, we were talking about this prior but for someone who uh was hesitant to jump in uh you're on, you said you're on what your second new game plus right now i i am and i am i'm going to be 100 percenting the game this week oh shit which i i do not i haven't even finished it how are you i do not he has I kyle brand I do, yeah. It's it, you know how normally when I'm playing games that my attention becomes just I'm I'm committed to mainlining it. This one I'm just committed to beating it. I'm just like I will literally. There were nights the first the first weekend I was playing. Um, I this is the last weekend. I it was seriously so bad that I would go to sleep. I would play until about eleven or twelve at night. I would go to sleep. And wake up 30 minutes later because I was thinking about whatever boss I was on so much that I just, I was like, I have to, I have to keep trying. And then another four or five hours would go by. So I would probably play anywhere from 16 to 20 hours a day. It was, it was, it was very unhealthy. I, 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 I think... I, I, I am just. I, I just want to be to see what to to why I am so flabbergasted right now is that like. He was like, he he sent me a message on Discord. He was like, hey, do you want to help me fight this boss? And it's like one of like the first bosses of the game. And like, I came in to help him. And long story short, I died immediately. So I wasn't very much help. <laughs> but like, and then we had some like internet issues and like we couldn't get it to work again. And so like, I'm like, all right, well, you're stuck at this first boss, but I'll definitely come back and help you at some point. And then like two days later, he posts a screenshot on Twitter and says, I've beaten the game. And I'm like, what the fuck? You were just an early <laughs> boss. Like I was trying to help you with that, and now you've beaten it. Like you, you lapped me like five times. How did you do that? <laughs> well, and and on my first playthrough, I did a lot of side stuff too. My second playthrough, I I literally just there's like eleven bosses that you have to fight, and I just went through those those ones. I did nothing else extra, only because I was trying to get one of the like shitty endings mm -hmm. that you have to get for a trophy and. A lot of like the uh, the the last one I'm doing now on this last new game plus, and it's also where I'm going to complete everything else. The quest line you have to do to unlock its ending is like a it's a really it's a really long one. So I have um, I've decided this is going to be the one where you know I'm not, I'm not rushing through it. I'm finishing up. I'm not going back into old dungeons I've already done if I don't need to. So there's some things that I'm skipping, but there's there's a lot of areas that I just never finished. And so now I'm just working on finishing up the last. I think there's like five or six optional bosses that I haven't fought yet um, or haven't beaten yet. I've actually been to almost all of them, but hadn't finished them. So I am making my way through them. And then once I get through them, I will be done with, uh, done with, done with, done with, done with the game. And I'll have that platinum trophy and I'll feel good about myself. I have a plan and my plan is to be done in three days. I have a set list of things that we do every day. I, I, I think I'm that you this. are like the perfect case study for someone being so hesitant to jump into it and just like if you sit there and like kind of just learn how things like on, on the spectrum of like game difficulty, like Souls games are on the harder end. I don't, I don't see why people say it's it's not hard. Like on, on the spectrum of stuff, it, it's on the harder end. Dark Souls 2 but, and 3 and parts of Elden Ring so far have been hard. Oh, and Bloodborne is hard, but Dark Souls 1 isn't hard. At least me, at least in my opinion. I, I would just say that there's kind of like a steep learning curve for the most part. Yeah, that. I agree. The whole point of... Yeah, um, uh, at least in me, it seems like the whole point of Demon Souls and Dark Souls 1 is for you to learn how to play the game. Um, and then once, once it became the series that's hard, they kind of threw that out the window. <laughs> For uh, listeners, uh, Mesa has, has uh, suddenly appeared. With, yeah, sorry about with, that. With, it's all kidding. I think you have like some slight echo though. Oh, welcome my headphones. It's all good. There we go. But no, so, uh, so I, I will say with a lot of that too, with 
you know, getting the difficulty. And obviously, there's a lot of discourse about that. And I was talking with someone about it the other day. Do we want to get into it? Do we want to deep dive into that? No, we won't deep dive into it because because I have time. But just just making a, a mild statement on it. People aren't asking for the game to be made easier. Like, it's not even the majority of of especially just different accessibility and and specifically disability advocates that have seen aren't saying, oh, give the game an easy mode, that fixes the problem. Like the issue isn't, and then people will retort with, well, you know, this so-and-so is has a disability and they beat it, you know, just get good. And it's like, okay, th- shut the fuck up. But the issue is just that there are people who are physically in, like there are things about it and mechanically things that you have to be able to do that can be challenging with, with, with a lot of different disabilities. And so making the game easier doesn't fix it. It's just giving more options for people who are limited. You can do that and still allow for that learning curve and learning because that is the appeal of the game is being able to learn these things that are challenging. So the, the, the debate isn't, should there be an easy mode or not or at least it shouldn't be should there be an easy mode or not the debate shouldn't exist the debate or the the situation should just be find ways to implement accessibility features that make it so more people can play the game and still experience a challenge i yeah the game would not be nearly as fun as an easy mode now also there's obviously the point of like it, an easy mode existing doesn't stop you from playing on the harder difficulty but i do think it's it is harder to to add to having to have to design the entire game for different levels of difficulty it, it can mess some things up design wise that you then have to go in and, and, and adjust so i can understand not doing that but there are ways to just make it so it's more accessible for people to play and i think mm-hmm. that's in gaming in general that should be a no-brainer is whatever we can do to make it so more people can play it doesn't mean changing the game it just means adding more options and then there's no there shouldn't be an issue with that but you know that's a whole it's it's the internet so of course there's an issue but yeah you know, it's, it's twitter i think the, okay, of course but, the smartest i was just going to say that to build off that real quick it's uh, like yeah there, there's a long laundry list of accessibility features that can be put in whether it's for people that are like deaf hard of hearing if they have visual impairments if they're physically or, mo- or mobility impaired uh something as, as simple as like proper subtitles or uh being able to remap buttons um that shit goes a long way um and it's just as far as the like the easy mode it's just like yeah no this, this game's meant to be played like on that difficulty like if there was an easy mode i don't give a fuck if anyone wants to play on it if, if they ask my opinion on it i'd be like i don't know i feel like you're missing the point if you're doing that if, if you if you if you fundamentally don't want to engage with a thing that makes a souls game a souls game then I don't know what to tell you. You do you, I guess. I, mean, I there have been like Souls likes that have had difficulties. Like Jedi Fallen Order has mm-hmm. a difficulty level. Uh, Stranger of Paradise is going to have a difficulty level. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't think Neo had difficulty levels. I don't I, think so. I don't think they do. So like, and it's, it's so it's all over the place. And like, I me personally. I don't think adding an easy difficulty or changing the difficulty is going to change the game at all because you can hear from people who are playing on this difficulty that like some bosses like are fucking like in in Elden Ring specifically there are some late game bosses that are apparently like one shotting people despite the fact that they have like really Mm -hmm. high health stats and like changing putting in a difficulty option that like changes how hard they hit or um you know gives you a little more life or whatever is going to change that from being one shot to being two shot probably and their patterns are still going to be the same and like for me like i think if a difficulty mode was added I don't think it would be that big a deal. <laughs> Honestly, um, like I think people could who play these games for the difficulty would still get the same experience. Nah. Um, now, I now try that, saying that shit on Twitter, uh, my people are gonna want to throw hands. I think <laughs> I think the best way to handle this for for an easy mode Dark Souls wouldn't be like you know uh, you uh, you hit harder and they hit less, or you have more health and they have less health. Be more like the DMC way of of. Um, of rebalancing everything, making rooms easier by having less of certain types of enemies, and making their attack patterns different depending on the difficulty. But that also takes forever to do. Yeah. So, it's uh, in order for it to remain like the, the 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 feeling that they want to remain, they would have to do that, and that also means probably doubling the budget 
and the dev time. Yeah, and that that's where it leads to a lot of issues mm -hmm. where, like I said, it, it becomes challenging to do. But if you do things, Gama said, like just make it so you're not getting. Because what's the what's the challenge of getting one shot by a boss? What are you gonna learn? From, especially because I've had opportunities or situations where it's happened and it's been like unavoidable yeah. like i just i got caught up in something and i was i was i thought i was outside of the range but i was like a frame off and it, and it's like you get some weird fucky situations where it gets buggy and you end up dying and it's like i didn't learn anything from that i just got mad because i did the right thing it mm -hmm. was just the slightest bit off it's like make these things just a little bit more forgiving and then and then it's gonna get you know, people still have to learn the attack patterns. You still have to figure out, but because uh, otherwise, the alternative is what people are doing now, where they're finding ways to farm runes and just level up like crazy. Not that I've done that, because of course, because <laughs> yeah. you're I, a I, fucking I, real gamer over here. I did that. Um, but or or people are finding like like uh, overpowered spells that they can cast and and do a lot of damage. You know, again, not like I would. I, I certainly haven't done that a lot. Um, you know, but like we're gonna find other ways, and I'd honestly kind of rather just learn the the patterns. But it's like if I'm gonna get fucked no matter what, I can I can know all the patterns in the world. But if they're gonna one shot me in an unavoidable attack, well then it's like, well then what what? I don't. You, you would love I don't have any, if, Seven's final boss. If they're gonna, you would have me, so much gonna, fucking fun. <laughs> if they're gonna cheese me, then I'm gonna fucking cheese them. Yes, yeah, that's. It. Yeah, like, I mean, yeah, I, 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 my he's my the best build. part of these types of games. Yeah, my build is currently giant fucking laser beam. Like that's how I kill things now. I also think my frustration with a lot of the the stuff around the just the discourse in general is like, like because I said it's it's like I'm gonna quote to you. You call you a fucking piece of shit, Kyle. Well, <laughs> uh, the fucking challenge, idiot. the challenge is the bulk of the 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 intention or the appeal. Like that that is something that and having hard games is is can be really good and i love that they've done it and they do it really well the problem is just that like you were you were joking that but there's a lot of people that are just really toxic with the way that they say oh this mm -hmm. is the way it's it's this is this is the most authentic experience or the most rewarding experience and in general that is probably true but if somebody wants to play the game on an easier mode and also completes it their sense of accomplishment is going to feel no different than mine but there are going to be people who go, oh, well, screw you. You didn't actually beat the game because you played on easy. Ha ha ha. You, you're garbage. You know, look at me. I'm a real gamer. Like, first of all, if the difficulty of video games that you're playing is what gives you joy in life, you have deeper problems. Maybe see a therapist. But this idea that like uh, like people playing it in a different way, because if because for for some for, you know, and I use you as the example, Jose, just because you said that you, you brought this up, but like for you playing it on, on the intended difficulty or like the, the, hard, the really hard difficulty like that's what is fulfilling to you and that's like that is that is awesome because you have an experience that is incredibly fulfilling if someone else gets that same feeling playing it differently why does it matter you know and i know to you it doesn't mm. and, and and so i don't i don't mean that directed to you but there are just so <laughs> many people where it does matter to them. And I think like, it's just some it people take it really like, seriously. It's, it's not like no. it's, it's never like a passing comment to people on Twitter. It's just like they fucking live and breathe yeah, this it's, shit. It's it's their whole it's their yeah. whole identity. It's like, bro, like, yeah, go outside, it, it, go touch some grace. Yeah, I see. I see. I see what you did there. But yeah, there's no fucking there's no subtlety to Twitter. It's like it's gone to the point. I just don't want anything to do with like either side of the fucking mm -hmm. argument. I'm just like, all this Absolutely. fucking annoying. I know, it's like, I know what I think, whatever. You just move on with it. I I don't even give it like like two seconds of, of my thought process on a day. And, and some people live and breathe and fight that shit Twitter 24 fucking 7. It's... And there are, there, there are other, like, like it was mentioned here, there are other Souls-like games that have difficulty. And those games are great. You know, Jedi Fallen Order was given as, as an example. Like, Fallen Order is an incredible game. I played it on an easier difficulty. Because I wanted to experience the story, and I didn't want to have to dedicate all of my time to figuring out all the different fights. I still had a great experience with the game. I still felt like that game was incredible. I don't think that I didn't play the game. 
You may be in the game, but we don't grant you the rank of master, Kyle. Also, also, um, uh, that game also told you exactly what they changed between difficulties. Yeah. Which I really like. They tell you, like, oh, okay, your health is lower, and we changed the period time for the harder difficulty, and uh, that's fantastic. More things should definitely do that. I think that's about going to do it for the show, unless anyone has any closing comments or whatever. Um, sorry I'm late. Haha. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know. You know what? You, uh, you and George R. You know what? At least you came. Uh, George R. R. Yeah. Martin still has to finish stuff. That's true. That's true. I'm best at finishing, honestly. Do you think his wife has ever orgasmed? Um, we know he hasn't, though. That's the most important yeah, thing. There you go. <laughs> that dude's got you a can't, blue. You balls. can't make a fantasy. You can't make a fantasy world if you've orgasmed once. That's just the truth. <laughs> That's why that's my why Aragon, was never going anywhere, huh? That's why Aragon had to be made when he was 16. <laughs> Alright? Because <laughs> he hasn't had a chance yet. Let's see. Um, let's see, any, any other closing comments from, from uh, the panel? I don't know if you talked about Pokemon. No. Uh, nice. I think we'll have pretty to get good. that next time. Very good. That's all I'm saying. Alright. That's we're, it. We're, I finished talking. Atma, got anything? Triangle strategy is good. That's all I got. That's okay. like one of my fucking favorite geometrical shapes out there. I just want to let you know. We'll, that. It we'll, is, we'll, talk that ne we'll talk about that next episode, too. I thought, I thought Hexagon was the best to go. Fuck Hexagon. Whoa! I went there. Hexagon. Strong, Strong words. We need, we need to round up, round up all the hexagons, fucking put them in, a, in like some kind of camp for interns, some kind of like internment camp, fucking gas them up. I don't know, man. Gas them up. Hit them, hit them with Fuck that delousing agent. <laughs> I know. I gotta stop. I. <laughs> I gotta stop, man. It's, it's fucked up. Uh, it's all good. It's fun. Um, one, one last uh, thing. Uh, we're, we're gonna have the little hot take um, hot take hour at the end of the show. So we're gonna spin okay. a wheel. Whoever gets it, um, they, they get to have a hot take and no one gets to contest it. No one gets to say shit. So, okay. Um, I mean, I, I guess I could share my screen, but that might fuck up the Discord thing. Well, let me let me see. Sorry, we we see. Oh, he's gone. That did, that did fuck up he's the Discord gym. thing because I fucking left. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> yeah. Shit, we that sucked. You. you betrayed us. I I did betray us. Uh, share my screen. Uh, screen is that is that come? Yeah, that does fuck things up. It's a yeah. It's a, I I don't want I don't feel like fixing it at the moment, so. Right. Um, you're, you're just gonna have to live with it, Atma. You're, you're kind of cropped out at the moment. Oh no! You still have like a good forty percent of your camera view. <laughs> Click on that life insurance ad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. Who gets it? Mesa, you got a hot take. Uh, of course it's me. Uh, what's my hot take? Um, um, I guess my hot take right now is that eldering is okay. It's pretty good. It's whatever. <laughs> That's my hot take. That's your hot take? Come on, get some. Right. Yeah, you sound a little spicy. Pretty good. That's All right. Pretty, pretty spicy? Really let, me think, let me think. I've already talked about how the early 360 PS3 generation almost killed video games. Um, let me think. Um, You got this, bud. I got, I got it, man. I got it. Um, Channel your inner Twitter demon. You got something. None of the Tomb Raider games are really that good. The new ones, of course. They're not that good. They're like, they're always like six out of tens, all of them. And I've played all of them for no reason. I'm not going to contest that <laughs> because that would be against the rules. <laughs> <laughs> all I'm saying is I revisited those games and my opinion has changed. Okay. Shit. Okay. okay. We, we can't contest it. Mesa's base mm -hmm. is, uh, is factually correct. All right, that's that's the show. Thanks for hanging out. Uh, start of season two. It was, it was a fun ride. Mm -hmm. uh, smacking babies, swinging by and building. The next generation. Yeah, the next. Uh, two gamers, two two sessionists. Uh, game session two. Uh, son of son of game session. Game session um, harder. Uh, we're <laughs> missing the obvious game session two electric boogaloo. Fucking hell. <laughs> Wait, we're, game session strikes back. You know, I, I was um, going to do the pun of, uh, mm -hmm. I guess it's not really a pun. I was, I was just going to rebrand the show to Game, game session, session Infinity War. I mean, there's that. 
I, I, but I was gonna go with Game Session V3, but only fucking losers like like me would understand the reference. I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that for season. Is that Dongan Rapa? I don't know what you're talking about, but yeah, I'll, I'll probably wind up doing that for season three. Mm -hmm. I'll I'll steal it for that. You know, game I'll, sessions I'll, with attitude. I'll do game session season three, and then game session uh, V3, two completely different things, and then hey. we'll just. But going on going on brand with what we talked about today, it should be Game Session 2, the arcade game. Oh, there you go. Arcade edition? Mm. The Cowabunga edition. I'll, I'll, uh, Super Game Session 2 Turbo. There you go. There we go. I like Hyper, that. Hyper edition. <laughs> there you go, yeah. yeah. Alright, that's the show. Thanks. Bye-bye. I'll edit mm -hmm. this tomorrow when I don't have to deal with daylight savings in like oh, six fuck. hours. Don't remind no, me about daylight savings. I was so I, mad when I found out that was too I, 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 right? I usually get up at midnight for work. Now it's going to be fucking 1 a.m. It's going to suck ass. Uh, Shit. Alright, bye-bye. Bye-bye.